scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Listen to me. The Bible says, But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn, and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. I submit to you, dear people of God, that there is a lot of boastful speaking in the body of Christ without the grace requirement to defend it. This is why our talk is soon becoming a nuisance to society. We propose too many things about God and we round up services and nothing happens. We tell people God is able to do this. God is able to do that. God is able to do this. We live in a generation that is not just loyal. They need results. They need real results. Let me tell you this. This generation needs real results. We must be able to make the word become flesh so that we can now behold the glory if God prospers let our lives show it if God brings speed let our lives show it if God restores let our lives show it are we together now yes when Moses I think I've shared it here when Moses stood before Pharaoh he did not talk for long he just told him who sent him and the rod continued the talking there must be something in your life that keeps talking even when you are quiet. Thy rod and thy staff. There's too much talking. God can lift. God can anoint. My brothers and my sisters, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is an authorization. It's a, it's, 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 it legitimizes your operation. It's an ordination into the possibilities of the Christ. It is true that the Holy Spirit empowers. He empowers a businessman. He empowers a man of God. He empowers a student. He empowers a anybody. But we have rejected that ministry of empowerment. Listen, I wrote something down here. Confession of scripture without the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit is mere psychology. The strengthener of our speakings is the Holy Spirit. That we're releasing words that contain spirit and life. We are not just noisemakers. Are we together? Yes, sir. The ministry of the Holy Spirit. Isaiah chapter 61 from verse 1 to 4. The messianic prophecy that applies to the church prophetically. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, he says. For he hath anointed. The word there is to be called to legitimize an operation akin to an ordination. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me. And then he begins to list the things that he has anointed me to do. To bind the brokenhearted, to set the captives free, to deliver those who are oppressed, etc., etc. Are we together now? Yes. It says to give them beauty for ashes, the joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. It says that they be called the oaks or trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. John chapter 15 and verse 8. Herein is our father glorified, the Bible says, when ye bear much fruit. Please say results. Shout it please. Say results. 
you must you i i want to challenge you as we wrap up this conference and and this this moment of spiritual emphasis you must cry for supernatural results there, there's too much there's too much of natural things it it, it, it must, people will only wonder if it is the lord's doing supernatural dimensions these things i write unto you O excellent theophilus of all that jesus began to do and teach not teach alone do and teach let the sick be healed in a level and dimension that dumbfounds principalities and powers did the bible not say we are his workmanship not just his explanators we are his workmanship recreated in christ the Bible says that it be known to principalities and powers by the ecclesia, the church, the manifold wisdom. The Holy Spirit can empower. He can place something upon your life that commands favor from everywhere. And now people begin to wonder and say, how do you do it? And then you lead them to the Christ, the giver of all good things. Listen to me. Don't leave this service this afternoon without contending for higher dimensions of the empowerment of the Spirit. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8, please. I'd like you to read the A part when you find it projected. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. Go ahead. One to go. I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. I am full of power. You can be full of power by the operations of a herbalist. You can be full of power by the, the stretch of your intellect. But the basis of the power that I sustain comes from the spirit. The spirit is the custodian of the power of God. I am full of power by the spirit. It takes the power of God to dominate in this wicked world. 66 and verse 3 psalms say unto god how terrible art thou in thy ways through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you it takes power the bible says grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of our god and, and so on and so forth and then he says he according as his divine power everybody say his divine power your faith connects you to his divine power but the giver of the possibilities in your life is his divine power had given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness the power of the holy spirit it's not a, a pentecostal gibberish that people talk just because they are charismatics no the power of the holy spirit is god's ability at work in a man the fortitude to produce god's dimension of results even though you are a man let the ability of the holy spirit come upon you and then it begins to define all the possibilities that are in your life listen i've shared it here i think um maybe last year or so but let me tell you this brothers and sisters please hear me the anointing of the holy spirit is in levels and the anointing of the holy spirit is also dimensional just because you have an anointing does not mean every problem will be solved no the problems are solved according to the measure of grace that is received otherwise there would be no need for further impartations the bible tells us in acts chapter 10 and verse 38 are we still here it says how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power the key word there is how god look at the extent to which god anointed jesus not that he was anointed he was so anointed with the holy ghost and with power and he went about doing good and healing all day that were oppressed of the devil because god was with him it takes the empowerment of the holy spirit to excel in business it takes the empowerment of the holy spirit to excel in career ministry your church today is an attestation of the investment of the spirit and his power upon your pastor and upon your leaders nicodemus comes to jesus by night and says rabbi i know that thou art a man sent from god he says for no man can do these things except god be with him there are tokens of the presence of god with a man that when god is with you it is impossible to doubt it because he will leave tokens the signs the wonders the supernatural manifestations of the power of god we must return to a dimension where our lives are supernatural always how you get your job how you are promoted how you are sustained how you move 
in one day someone's one year testimony comes to you it's a dimension listen god is not just interested in making us have and make progress he wants to make a message out of our lives he calls us living epistles if all people know about you is you made money you move forward you are a christian your life is not compelling enough to bring glory to god how it happens is where the glory is derived from oh you got a job by an uncle helping you it's too natural for an applause but that you were sitting and an angel told someone give him a job now god is not interested in the job as it were the job is yours it's your benefit but the testimony how it was derived is where the majesty and the might of god comes are we together now i worked for 20 years and then i built a great duplex it's too natural we just say well done you're a human being who used your time well But when someone is sleeping and sees you in a vision and God says, don't tell him, build the house. I want to use him an, as an example of what we call prepared blessings. Build the house, give him the key because the master has need of it. This is what the grace of God can do. The grace of God is not limited to salvation. The grace of God is how we live. The grace of God is a representation of every good and perfect gift that comes from above. It's a compendium of all the possibilities in God routed through the Christ to the saints. It's called grace. It's not just limited to the, the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ. That's just a dimension of grace. Favor is grace. Mercy is grace. Speed is grace. We're going to pray. It's important that we carry something upon our lives. It's been my message for the body of Christ for many years. Embrace the ministry of the Holy Spirit and he will turn your life into a sign and a wonder. Do not embrace him when you find out you are called into ministry. No. Embrace him the day you realize you are a man. He is the life-giving factor. You will never be the same. You've touched his grace. Your life will change. I will never be the same. I've touched your grace. My life must change. I will never be the same. I've touched your grace. My life must change. I will never be the same. I've touched your grace. Listen, history is full of people who were mightily used by the Holy Ghost. My brothers and my sisters, I bring you the ministry of the Holy Spirit. This is not a preacher's sermon. This is a revelation. Edit difficulty out of your life. Edit confusion in your life, out of your life. By embracing this mysterious personality, he can empower you. He can place something upon your life you were not born with. He can place something upon your life that is not on your degree. He can place something upon your life that your background did not capture. He is called the Holy Ghost, the spirit of power, the spirit of grace. When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide. He will reveal. Look at me, please. We are going to pray. Let me show you a scripture God showed me. Mighty God. Second Corinthians, please. Chapter 9 and verse 8. Haruskali brandaskila hashibar hasgibada. And God, H-I-C-C, and God has an ability to make all grace. Listen carefully. Please listen to me. I want you to be sensitive. I'm seeing a wind. Just move. I'm going to pray for you shortly. Please, guys, let's, the instrumentalists, you can just walk together. Listen to me. Every dimension in the spirit, please look up. There is a grace allocated for that possibility. 
there is a grace that produces speed please listen there is a grace that produces restoration there is a grace that produces favor you are not favored because you are in need no there is a grace upon you please listen to me i know what i'm saying there is a grace that compels a generation to hear your voice just because you have what to say does not mean people will listen to you there is a there is a hear ye him anointing that when it's upon you you will open the two lift gates of territories not cities not churches because of the ointment so do the virgins love thee he was not talking about women virgin dimensions that you are introduced into spaces you have never been because of something that is upon your head thou anointest my cup my head with oil my cup runneth over are we together now you must covet listen you cannot walk in the grace of yesterday and have today's results no 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 yesterday's grace was sufficient for yesterday's issues remember the bible is talking about us being sufficient capable rising up to the task and the bible says the mechanism by which this is achieved is that god is able to coordinate the various graces that the prophetic word upon you require if god says this is your year of expansion and vision there are certain graces that must be present otherwise december 31st will come and that word will not be there and the bible says in such a conference god is able to coordinate all grace some of you will need speed some of you will need restoration some of you will need prosperity you will need favor the bible says god is able able to make all grace abound towards you that ye having all sufficiency may abound to all good works listen to me results in this kingdom are not commanded by intentions alone results in this kingdom are not even commanded by the proposition linguistic propositions it takes the energizing of the spirit to prove the reality of the Christ to all and sundry here and now by this you bring glory to the Christ then you make Galatians 1 24 become a reality and they glorified God in me and they glorified God my life has become an effulgence you will say of signs and wonders next time you read the Bible you are reading yourself it's no longer a book that was printed by Zondervan or White Taker House. It has become your experience. And the hand of the Lord came upon um, Elijah and he ran. So speed is possible. Lord, where is that grace? And God is able to make all grace, including that grace, to rest upon you. That by March, you have already done what you plan to do 2025. It's over already please listen I'm not I'm not just motivating you this is spirit communication God is able you're a businessman you will be tired of just using the strength of the flesh to draw people the same grace that brought the animals into the ark of Noah there is a grace that draws men into the ark Noah just stood at the ark and a, a strange grace drew the animals two by two seven by seven till they came into the ark when that grace rests upon your business you will marvel and wonder at the things that men do for you listen listen loyalty is more than just a leadership principle loyalty is a grace there is a grace that comes upon you the bible says certain men came to david in the cave of adulam and they vowed that they will make him king they came and made a weak leader a leader who was in hiding and yet his weakness was not a factor they said we will save you we will lift you and you will rule over us the possibilities that we desire are governed by graces please listen to me it is in the office of the Holy Spirit to bring prophecy to pass the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God that proceeds forth 
when his word comes it coordinates all the human machineries to see to it that the speakings of god comes to pass it does not just happen by luck i'm explaining this to you so that when your life becomes an effulgence of signs and wonders you will give god glory but not be surprised because it can happen again and again that means when you leave this service and you see 10 missed calls and someone is saying where are you what i want to give you i cannot i i need you to be there and you say what is it and then he reminds you that you just carried something you did not come to church with a, a an engracing of the spirit listen to me all things are possible but not under every condition there is a condition that manipulates favor above you there is a condition that will compel a generation to hear you there is a condition that will compel wealth and abundance will make some 112 a reality in your life blessed is the man that feared the lord that delighted greatly in his commands the bible declares that his seed shall be mighty upon earth then it says the generation of the upright shall be blessed it says wealth and riches shall be in his house and yet his righteousness endures forever there is a grace that is responsible for that there is a grace that opens your eyes to scripture ephesians chapter 3 and verse 8 and 9 the grace that makes all men see there is a grace that opens the eyes of men to see Habakkuk said, I will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower that I will see what he will say to me. So as we pray, I know that our time is spent, but we're going to have a minute or two to pray. And in that prayer, you are going to cry out for the various graces that control possibilities that are not yet at work in your life. Listen to me. When it was time... The Bible says that God mandated Moses to anoint Aaron. Listen, and he says it in a very interesting way. He says that Aaron was full of the spirit of God. And yet, he told Moses to anoint Aaron and to take some of his honor and give Aaron. Honor is transferable. When the grace for honor is upon you, people will veto your limitations as though it does not exist. Are we together? for your ministry i believe there are men and women of god around and watching for your business for your life listen father all the graces that must be coordinated synergized galvanized around my life in this season to make my life an effulgence a revelation of prophecy a reflection of the possibilities that reside in the christ i obtain by faith lift your voice and pray someone is praying here you're about to encounter a grace that will shift you into realms untold, dimensions beyond your imagination. Please pray. I will never be the same I've touched your grace My life must change I will never be the same I've touched your grace My life must change I will never be the same I've touched your grace My life must change My life must change It's my prophecy my life must change ah my life must change and he measured a thousand cubits and it was a river to my knees and he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my loins and he measured a thousand cubits and it was an overflowing river hicc pray on these 21 days all through this time words have come but on the 21st day oh god let something rest upon my life and upon my destiny shift my life shift my finances hallelujah Hallelujah. Please look at me. We're rounding up.
one scripture and then i pray for you and we're done john chapter 17 from verse 1 jesus is praying to the father before he would begin the journey of his passion and the bible says that he lifted up his eyes to the heavens and he said the hour is come everybody said the hour is come so there is a timing for every season in our lives you must know when not just the time but the hour it says thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time the time to favor her yea the kairos time is come it says glorify thy son that thy son may bring glory to you that means lord use me as a trophy to attract men to you use me as a testament of wonder my life is that available to be a revelation they may not understand your speakings from the realm of the spirit but let me be a manifestation of your possibilities in ministry in life and i vow that through that you will be glorified someone lift your voice and pray i'm available oh god to be used as an instrument for signs and wonders i'm available oh god to be used as a conduit of your power pray for your family pray for your ministry hallelujah hallelujah now listen please listen please look up i admit to you and i submit to you that outside of the grace of god and the investment of the spirit we are not worth much the wow factor in our lives is captured in the weightiness of the graces that surround us this is what translates us into spectacular individuals that on our own there is not much to be desired on our own by our strength we we are not worth that degree of admiration except that at the back of our frailty is a support system a compendium of graces that can afford possibilities higher than the realm of men this must be your desire behind frail men behind limited men the workings of the spirit turning ordinary men to manifest godlike features and so you must pray that as he rests his hand upon you in the few minutes we have lord let what comes upon me grant me the grace to prove let me be able to prove the validity of your faithfulness hallelujah this is why i came to be an extension by the spirit to sponsor and allow the transference of possibilities in our lives hallelujah please lend me five minutes and i'm done praise the lord young lady look at me this lady i'm seeing the hand of god come upon you right now there is a very strong anointing and the lord is saying that he's bringing you to realms of visions great visions in the spirit i release that grace upon you in the name of jesus the christ of god now i want to pray for you is it all right if we just pray five minutes please lift your hands let's pray impartation is a transference of possibilities you can have something you did not come to church with in addition to all the graces and the investment of the spirit deposited upon you you can carry things graces possibilities and creation was mandated to answer you based on the grace that you carry every grace has a voice it calls what it was designed to call when you carry the grace that makes for favor it will go around lagos while you are sleeping and attract the possibilities that make for you to be a testament on that wise hallelujah hallelujah i stretch my hands we may not have time to bring people out but let me just pray my god i want to release the grace for speed there is a real grace for speed that can cause people to step into dimensions in a hurry i stretch my hands at the count of three 
from the front to the back the left to the right help them please in the name of jesus the christ of god take that grace now take that grace now take that grace now speed to your destiny in the name of jesus receive the grace for speed by the power of the holy ghost i declare that you will run and overtake the chariots of ahab down to jesreel speed in business you are in ministry here receive speed in the name of jesus receive speed hallelujah i'm seeing the number 17 there is a healing anointing a strange grace for the healing ministry right now is coming on them i wish this time would have brought them forth here because i need to pray for them right now i stretch my hands that healing grace please help me in the name of jesus grace for healing grace for healing carry that grace now it's coming on women it's coming on men please help them in the name of jesus help that lady i release that grace step into it dimensions of the power of god to heal dimensions of the power of god to save take that grace now you will never be the same you've touched his grace your life must change my friend look at me this young man on white take that grace right now by the power of the holy ghost you are stepping into a new dimension of grace and the lord is saying you will never never be weak again your inner man being strengthened by the spirit the lord is bringing this woman i don't know who she is a mighty grace for healing this is what i'm seeing the grace of god is upon you i release that grace upon you in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ the lord wants me to release a grace that makes for restoration there are people here who have lost money there are people here who have lost things please believe it and receive it in the name of jesus the son of the living god i declare between now and march by reason of this grace that comes on you i prophesy restoration restoration of time restoration of resources restoration of relationships hallelujah praise the lord the lord is opening my eyes and i'm seeing an eagle every time i see an eagle is a prophetic dimension of the spirit this is not for everyone but right now the power of god is coming i'm seeing 19 the number 19 19 people lord where are they from the front to the back i open up prophetic wells and i declare step into that dimension now shake it take it take it up step into that dimension spring up all wells wells of the prophetic upon women upon men i prophesied by the god of heaven the eyes that see the ears that hear i activate it by the spirit visions of the night visions of the day in the name of jesus sustain an intelligence of the spirit my friend look at me this man in the name of jesus i stretch my hands i'm seeing an anointing and the lord is saying he's moving you to new dimensions in the spirit take that fire now in the name of jesus christ now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty so in the name of jesus i pray for everyone who labors in doctrine and the word ministering the purposes of the spirit carry fire right now in the name of jesus christ spiritual illumination access to light in the name of jesus christ let me pray favor upon your life we cannot close this conference without favor look at me my brothers and my sisters i plead with you and i beseech you as the apostle will say to obtain and receive this grace the favor of God is a wonder and a marvel that will take us eternity to study. The possibilities that can be programmed upon the life of an individual, the favor of God projects his jealousy towards you and he will compel everything to reflect Christ. 
the favor of God is real the heart of every man is at the mercy of the father of spirits God himself being the father of spirits he can compel in one day the attention of kings towards you is part of his system of coordinating all grace towards you because many of us have been limited and territorially speaking many of us come from regions where we do not have a territorial advantage you must outsource your intelligence and advantage from God's favor provision I pray for you right now Esther chapter 2 and verse 15 if it's projected please give it to us Esther chapter 2 and verse 15 and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked at her Esther chapter 2 and verse 15 it says and Esther obtained favor in the what favor works with sight when favor is upon you the only person who cannot bless you is a blind man for as long as they can see you it is, is light through perception the moment they see you they are compelled it's an ability of the spirit you cannot explain in the name of Jesus may that grace that compel men to bless you to be interested in your lifting let it rest upon you in Jesus name let it rest upon you in Jesus name let it rest upon you in Jesus name Finally, the Bible says, please listen to me. It says, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. A new year and a new season is God's mercy system to help you forget yesterday. Because yesterday may come with its strategies, its pain, its losses, and all the disappointment and the ills and so he separates your yesterday and your tomorrow by using a mystery called today today becomes the dividing line that separates it heath and tether and grants you an opportunity to start afresh again but if the grace of God does not rest upon your today your today will become like yesterday because yesterday seeks to relieve itself yesterday does not believe it is dead so it uses your imagination to come back to life you will need an anointing that crushes yesterday to be gone and to be gone forever it was miriam that sang and said i will sing unto the lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horses and its rider my yesterday has been thrown into the sea are we blessed in the name of jesus the grace to start afresh I'm speaking prophetically to someone the business didn't go well in 2019 the family didn't go well your plans didn't work out as planned in the name of Jesus we anoint 2020 for you in addition to it being a year of visions and expansion let it be a year of speed let it be a year of recovery let it be a year of power let it be a year of new beginnings a new circle of possibilities in the mighty name of jesus look at me when the lord caused cain cain looked at god and said the penalty and the cause upon me is too grievous everybody who sees me will kill me and god put a mark of exemption upon cain and he said by that mark no one should touch him the bible said he suffered no man to do them wrong yea he reproved kings for their sake saying in spite of the evil that is plaguing society kidnappings accidents rumors of wars by the spirit of god i place a mark upon you and i call it a mark of exemption i place it upon your family i call it a mark of exemption exemption from tragedy exemption from failure exemption from limitations in the name of jesus the christ for you this year let it be that when men say there is a casting down let your testimony alongside everyone connected to this family let it be that there is a lifting up in the name of jesus i bless all the workers in this ministry rise to new dimensions 
I bless the leaders and the pastorate in this ministry. Rise to new dimensions. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We had a brief session with your pastor this morning. And he was asking me a few questions. What I saw God doing in the church. And I, we spoke a few things. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.